What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video we're going to be talking about a topic that I get asked quite frequently and that is the famous Zaha Hadid Haydar Center. I think it's a cultural center, it's an amazing building and uh, a lot of you have been sending me the image of that building and saying, well, how do you model this in Revit? Is it possible? Can you do it? Uh, how, how, what is the approach? And so on. Uh, so uh, when I was making my advanced modeling course for Revit, I thought this has to be an integral part of the course. I have to include this building. Now, uh, uh, keep in mind that buildings such as this one are quite complex to create. It's not just as simple as modeling the shape. Usually the whole construction is is modeled uh, is not going to be modeled in Revit. Uh, usually, some uh, advanced software is used for it, something like that. Uh, for example, I heard that uh, Frank Gehry's uh, uh, architects or uh, the company uses uh, some sort of aircraft design software in order to create his, his weird-looking buildings uh, or weird shapes. So uh, something like that. Uh, is quite hard to create, but the actual shape of the building and creating that uh, flowing shell that everybody uh, admires so much, that is impossible inside of Revit, but yet it, it's of course quite complicated. So uh, that's what I included in this course, and in today's video I'm just going to give you a little rundown of what was my approach to modeling that, just to show you what that uh, part of the course covers, and if you're interested in the whole thing, the whole chapter on this building is over an hour long, just to show you the general approach of building something like this, and there are four additional chapters where I talk about uh, massing in Revit, uh, advanced modeling techniques, and how to create uh, many numerous uh, complicated buildings such as the Calatrava twisted torso building and much, much more. So if you're interested in the course, it's going to be the first link just below the video, so make sure to check it out. And now for the uh, actual uh, model and the approach, that's what we're going to be covering right now. So uh, before I get into that, just make sure to like this video, it helps me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and also make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week. I make multiple tutorials. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. Now, the first thing that I would, li uh, that I would like to mention is the fact that this was modeled in the massing environment and uh, I actually used a massing family. So uh, for uh, massing in Revit, you can either use a project and then go to massing in place or in place massing, which is probably what uh, most people are, are using. It's kind of the most common way of achieving a bit of a more complex shape for your project. But in cases such as this one, where you have a very complex form, where you're probably going to spend uh, hours and hours on uh, just uh, playing around with the shape and creating the form, in cases such as this, what I prefer to do is go here to File, and then when I go to New, I go to Family, or I go straight into Conceptual Mass, but also you can go here to Family, and then choose the Conceptual Mass uh, a template. Now this is going to allow you to uh, to access this uh, design environment and it's a lot easier to work with uh, especially in 3D for example here as you can see I can show I can see the reference planes uh, even in 3D view and so on so it does have some uh, advantages uh, uh, that the uh, project environment just does not offer you. So uh, that's just when it comes to the modeling environment. Uh, moving on, uh, to create this uh, this whole shape, uh, uh, what I did is first load in some images as references to go by. So if I open up the level one here, you can see that here in level one, uh, we have the kind of the, the, the site plan view of the whole uh, center. And this is something that they used in order to kind of adjust these uh, profiles and points and so on. Uh, now, as I said here, uh, we only model the, 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 the front part of the building, but to be honest, that's kind of the most interesting part of the building anyways. So uh, that's the that's the kind of the, the main topic of this uh, course or this chapter of this course. Uh, now also if I open up the elevations, here you can see that we have that uh, image for elevation loaded in and it's scaled into exact proportion. Uh, and also here if I change this to wireframe, as you can see here, we can see how the uh, the, the building shape is overlapping with the, uh, with the background image. And the same thing goes for the rest of these. Here is the front. 
uh, here is the the north and then here is the east uh, now the reason why you have to load in all of these uh, is because it's an extremely complex form and ex an extremely complex shape so you really have to kind of uh, have the ability to view it from all sides and of course then the 3d view is where you make your uh, last fine tuning because you want it to look uh, exactly how uh, well uh, exactly how you want it to look uh, now, uh, it's going to take a lot of kind of back and forth, uh, viewing it from the 3D view, viewing it from uh, different elevations, going back and forth, going into uh, levels and so on. So just keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of this complex modeling is up to Revit, but then a lot of it is uh, up to you and your own uh, spatial awareness and, and, uh, and just how good are you at orienting yourself in space and so on. I tend to think I'm fairly good at it, but I'm still I still tend to have trouble uh, with some uh, complex shapes such as this one. I did have to go back and forth quite a bit just to orient myself perfectly with all of these points. Uh, now, speaking of points, as you can see, this has been modeled as a series of splines. Now, if I select them, they're uh, reference spline through points. Uh, now, the reason why I chose this draw tool, so here in the draw tools, uh, we have multiple options to choose from, and, and the one that I chose uh, was the uh, spline through points. Now, the reason for that is uh, mainly because of this front, where if I take a look at this, you can see that this overlap it basically uh, kind of wraps underneath itself. So as you can see here, so the front kind of wraps underneath itself. So for that, I needed to have a front of the building or a profile that can, well, do exactly that, wrap around itself. Uh, so you can't really do that uh, by using any other tools here. So if I were to create, uh, maybe use just the, the regular spline, so let's Let's actually go here to reference plane and create a reference plane here. Let's see, is this perpendicular? I guess it is, oops. Okay, this looks odd. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay, reference plane, yeah, now, now we're in the right place. Okay, so here we have the, a reference plane. If I select it, it's going to stay active. And now if I use a spline and just make sure to check draw on work plane. Uh, here, if I use a spline, I can actually create a shape that's kind of overlap. Uh, let's, let's try to get it to overlap with itself. So as you can see, if I try to kind of overlap this, it's going to be at the same point. So I don't really have the option to move one part of this spline above itself or uh, in front in a space. But if I just delete this and use these through points on the other hand, so let's try to kind of mimic that shape of the building, that iconic shape, there we go. And then let's go like this. So there's that overlap. So here, if I select any of these individual points, Revit is going to display the little gizmo, which allows me to move it in the X and Z direction, but it also allows me to move it in the Y direction. So it allows me to move this part, well, let's select this point and this one, and it allows me to move it kind of towards the inside, and then it allows me to move this uh, this point towards the outside. And of course, there is a lot of fine tuning to get it to look exactly like this. And I explained that in depth in the course, but that's just the approach and that's the tool that we use uh, for this particular uh, situation or this particular uh, application. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then also, finally, we do have to use some voids to make some openings like this opening here that we have. It's kind of uh, like an atrium or something. So for that uh, opening, we have to use a a uh, little void that's going to be following that and it's going to cut exactly that. And then for connecting it to the rest of the building, we actually have to create a whole new surface because as you can see here, uh, the shape changes. So it's actually quite difficult to get this to work. So that's why the, uh, the course is so long. It's over an hour creating this, even though this looks like it can be modeled in, I don't know, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops. Well, it is quite hard to get exactly everything to line up how it should and just to look exactly 
how it should. So that's why the course is so long. And uh, I, I try to skip the repetitive parts yet explain everything. So it doesn't take too long for you to watch it. Uh, but uh, and, uh, and but I still want to kind of show off each individual step. So that was the whole idea bit behind this part of the project. Okay, so anyways, that's uh, how this was modeled in uh, in this course. So make sure to check it out. Uh, again, as I said, I'm going to leave it as the first link in the description. So just check it out. Uh, it's the massing in Revit uh, course. It shows off the complete massing environment, and this is just the the final project where we kind of explore how to make the kind of the most difficult uh, shape building shape in architecture. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this quick little demonstration. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to get the course if you're interested. Also, uh, tell me in the comment section below, uh, do you like the approach? Do you have some comments? Or would you use maybe a bit of a different approach? I am always interested in learning other people's perspectives. Uh, make sure to like and share this video. It helps me out a lot. And I'll see you in a few days with another regular Balkan Arctic tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.